Hey guys, Kashira here. Welcome back to my channel. So in this video, we are going to talk about planning for beginners and where to start on your planner journey. The video I essentially wish I would have had before <laughs> I got started. So if you're interested in paper planners and getting started with that or getting consistent with that, stay tuned, subscribe to this channel, like this video and keep on watching. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to put a planner right here so you don't have to look at my hands. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is for people who are super new to this and you're trying to figure out what kind of planner to buy. So of course there's your traditional um, spiral bound planners. I'm not really into these to be completely transparent. I found that when I was using these historically, I struggled with being consistent. I actually prefer customizable planners, which are either disc bound or ring bound. And we're gonna talk about that. So just know we're not talking about spiral bound planners today. We're talking about planners you can actually customize. So there's two core types. There is what's called disc bound. And these are examples of discs. They come in plastic. They I've seen some that are like more metal. They come in different sizes um, and different colors. And the cool thing about the disc bound system is that you can get larger rings to make your planner bigger, which means you can add more sheets. So if you are someone who likes a carrying a lot of paper or having a lot of paper, you like to have a lot of historical records, disc bound may be for you. This is a happy planner. You don't have to use happy planner brand. You can honestly buy some disc from Office Depot, Staples. I mean, they have the Martha Stewart collection, a tool collection. You can get a ton in bulk on Amazon. Or you can order from small businesses like I do, like cloth and paper. There's a, a bunch of different types. I'm going to link in the description box my planner playlist. So you can see all of the shops I've bought from. I just have this here as an example. So if that's the case, the disc bound system may be good for you. I like the disc bound system, but I'm more of a ring bound girl. And you'll see in other videos how I go, I alternate between the two. So this is an example of a ring bound planner, which basically means it has binder rings in it. The limitations of a ring bound planner is that you're kind of limited to how big the rings are. Now there are some tutorials on how to remove this and replace it with something else, but that can be expensive and honestly you can damage your planner. So the downside of ring bound is that you are limited to the spacing, but for some reason I can't really explain why I love ring bound so much. I don't know, I just like ring bound and I think it forces me to be really um, particular and prioritize like what I actually need versus just like stuff in the planner. But you can get a lot of paper in here. So um, so that's that. So you have to figure out if you're a ring bound system or a disc bound system girl or, or guy. Then from there, once you figure out the system, you then need to figure out the sizing. So what you are looking at is called A5. A5 is very comparable to half letter. Half letter is what this size is basically in disc bound. So I'm gonna tell you that in a second. So in the ring bound system, the size options are, and there actually are, are one smaller than this. You have a personal size, okay? So you can kind of compare. So I'm zoomed out a little bit more just so you can see the size difference. So this is personal. There is one that's smaller than this. I forget what it, it's called, pocket size. There's I don't have a pocket planner, but there's a planner smaller than this called pocket. There's this, which is personal size. There's this, which is A5. And then, is there a bigger, I think after that, it's just letter size, which in, in our world is just a binder. <laughs> so I'm not even sure if there's another ring bound option outside of binder. At that point, you're just buying letter size to everything, which is just like regular paper, right? So these are the options in the ring bound system. The disc mount system has a couple more options, but I don't have a lot of them to show you. So here's an example of half letter. This is a Martha Stewart notebook, but it is the same size as half letter. And to compare and contrast, so you can see, see this uh, notebook, this binder is kind of big. So this, this dashboard is like the size of A5. So you can see the half letter is a little bit longer. Um, is that the case? Let's open it up because these covers be doing the most. So let's see. Okay. So here's just the comparison. So A5 is a little bit wider, half letter is a little bit longer. Very comparable though. Some people like buy 
inserts in one size and like cut it down and use it for the other completely up to you but this is that so I think that half letter and or a5 would be a good size for you if you tend to gravitate towards notebooks of this size if you like things that are like I mean they're not personal size but to me these are good for fitting in purses and things like that they don't take up too much space so you have to figure that out and then the next size up in disc bound world there is one smaller than this I don't know the the naming or have it but the next size up is letter size and this is a thing in a disc bound world so this is a letter size notebook that also can double as a planner this is a tool notebook and what's really cool is that in happy planner they have letter size as well happy planner has their own sizing system so their sizing system is completely different than anything else which has its pros and cons what I've seen happen in some small business shops is they will sell some inserts in sizes for happy planner so you'll see things like happy planner classic happy planner skinny classic things like that but they're not things that you're going to find readily and easily available in like amazon the staples or office depot things like that whereas letter size stuff you can like you can find that all over the place so this is for people who are already natural like notebook people you carry notebooks a lot you really like notebooks you like having a lot of space so you have to kind of play around my suggestion if you still have no clue is to kind of play around and so in that case I would say get some of the cheaper options to experiment so like for example you can get a coupon for these like Martha Stewart type notebooks or these tool notebooks in both letter size and half letter and just kind of play around with them they have very general calendar inserts for the tool brand in particular that you can put in here so just play around with it before you go off and invest in something like this like a, like a cover that's a hundred dollars or a Louis Vuitton <laughs> you know what I'm saying you don't want to spend that kind of money and then realize you don't like it so the first thing is like to play around with the sizing and figure that out um, I do have a happy planner in front of me this is a happy planner classic in case you are interested and then it's it's very much wider than it doesn't look like it in this cover this cover is just not a good example because it's so big but it's wider than half letter and a5 wider and longer so you have to figure that out so then once you figured the size you have to figure out your layout style this is where I'm going to tell you again go cost effective I found the most cost effective way to experiment with layouts is actually buying principles which you can get for like a couple dollars on Etsy I don't have a ton of principles with me right now but I would suggest this play around with monthly inserts weekly inserts daily inserts and then one more of your choosing before you get too deep into the specialty ones I would figure out the baseline of like how do you like to plan and I'll show you an example so one example of a layout you can get and this is available in a ton of different printables is this like dashboard style now depending upon whose shop you get it from it may say different things on this side but typically the other side always looks like that so that's your dashboard layout there's also the layout that I like to use which is called week on two right so you have your week on two layout these are my valentine stickers by the way your week on two layout right so you have that i'll show you an example of like my monthly because there's different styles of this there's like month they have some layouts where there's month on one page where it doesn't take up two pages there's some where there's like the month like this but then the note section and the priority section is way bigger so i would experiment with those first and like again i paid a dollar fifty for this month on to um layout for the whole year i didn't have to write the dates or anything i just like went ahead and spent that versus if i would have ordered a whole a whole year's worth of monthly inserts from cloth and paper would have been like 15 to 20 dollars you know what i mean so i would play around with printables to see to see what um types of layouts you like then from there if you are someone that like really likes notebooks and journaling and you've already been kind of tracking your time or your day or things you're working on in other methods i will look to see what you've already been doing for example if you are a big like cooker and you are always writing down on scrap pieces of paper in a notebook like your grocery list or your meal plan then getting some kind of grocery list um insert would make sense for you right so getting something like this would make sense for you or even like a recipe card like that would actually make sense for you or if you're like me where you prioritize a lot of your work and your business then you may want to get you know project planning inserts right 
I have two two versions of the same one, but project planning inserts. Or you may want to get um where's my oh my gold ones are in the front. Or you may want to get something like this where you can map out quarterly goals, right? This is from Elma Paper Co. So that's where you can get into the specialty ones by looking at what you're already tracking and then from there finding inserts that match that and go along with that. So again, I would play around with this. If you decide to go with principles, the two things you're going to need, you're going to need a cutting a cutting board if you're not good with like scissors, which I'm not, a cutting board which you can get at Michaels, and you're going to need a hole punch. And I'll put links for the ones that I use in the description box. I didn't grab those for this video. So play around with those and experiment. And what I've started to do because I realized that I was just kind of buying a little bit of all of the inserts and then not really using them, having to do a lot of customization and just kind of, I actually started all over with my business planner. This is the business planner now that I have to give you all an update on. But I just like really thought about what do, what was I already doing before I had this planner? And now I'm like using a lot of the sections a little bit more. So play around with the inserts play around what you like to track and give yourself some grace to get into it which is why i recommend starting off with weekly and monthly inserts for sure just to get used to it now let's talk about stickers right so if you're a person who is like okay i see everybody with these planner stickers i'm not sure if i'm into it but if i am into it how would i know sorry my arm is like blocking so there's like two types of planner styles when it comes to deco there's simplistic, mod, there's minimal, which is more simple, and then there's like what they call deco, which is really decorative. So I'm like, from the outside, like kind of a mix of both. So people who tend to do more minimal, they tend to have more like journaling cards like this. They tend to not have a lot of this type of stuff in there. They tend to use these types of stickers a lot, which are from cloth and paper. These like very, you know, simple, you know types of stickers and there's people like me who <laughs> do full-on valentine's day spreads right so you can actually i think that getting these types of stickers from cloth and paper would be the best bet but i have seen stuff like this in target if you want something that's easily accessible and if you want to experiment with like decorative stickers my recommendation would actually be to try the sticker books from cloth and paper not cloth and paper why do i keep saying that from hobby lobby here's why Y'all know I buy a lot of stickers if you've watched my channel before. I buy stickers from Etsy, ladies on Instagram. Those are the two places that I buy my stickers from the most. And then like if I see people do hauls of stickers on YouTube, especially black owned, black owned sticker companies, I like buy those. But they can get expensive because at that point, you're not buying sticker books, you're buying individual sticker sheets or sticker sets. So that can run you $6 a sheet, right? So if you're not even sure if you're into this, the Hobby Lobby sticker books have been like the cheapest that I've seen. Um, they're about $9.99 to $10.99 and you can always get a 40 to 50% off coupon. So these allow you to experiment. If you want, you can also go to Michaels. Michaels has a couple of recollection sticker books, but I haven't really seen them. Or you can go get you some Hobby Lot, some my, um, Hobby Lobby. Um, I'm talking so fast. I'm sorry, y'all. You can get you some Happy Planner sticker books. They typically are marked down 30 to 40 percent off, but just know that these are 20 dollars each. So 30 to 40 percent off means you're still spending around like 12 bucks or so. So just kind of prepare your budget for that. But again, because these are typically like cheaper, if you get this 40 to 50 percent off, it's four to five dollars. Um, you know, you have a little bit more room to play with your budget. So here's like what some of these stickers look like, and they come themed like Happy Planner. They're just it's just not as many sheets in here. So I wanted to show you like two options. Where these again, they are very similar to a lot of the sticker books that I see. The only difference is with these types of sticker books, you're not going to get a lot of the what they call the doll stickers. Let me show you an example of what a doll sticker is. So something like this. You're not gonna see a ton of these in these types of sticker books. You'll see a couple of them in Happy Planner, not too much, you know, especially ones that look a lot like us, like this. This is from Isis Ella Jewels. You're not going to see a lot of those. But before you even invest in her, <laughs> you may want to see, do you even like decorating? Sometimes because so many people on YouTube decorate, you might be like, oh, I have to do it. Or, you know, you kind of just make this assumption and then you end up spending all of this money. So start with the affordable stuff first. See if you even like the idea of decorating. See if that even gives you life. And then from there, if it does, you can start to invest and get other things. So you all know by now I have a huge collection of stickers and sticker books. And I do actually use my stickers. Um, there's other types of stickers you can get as well. A lot of people use these dot stickers to... Um, they, I've seen people put it on their calendar view so they can kind of mark like birthdays and different important things. I've typically used these to make lists, which is why they stay in my planner. And then other types of stickers are things like this. 
that you can use. These are typically called like task card stickers. Uh, people tend to put these on little cards. Do I have any task cards in here? I don't think I do. Um, they tend to put these on like these little like plastic ID cards to make like task cards, which are supposed to be reminders and you can like move the stickers. I think it's just a little too much, but I just like having them in my planner. Um, but you can use these as like headings, headers, you can put them on task cards, you can use these as divider stickers, you can do a ton with these. This is more of the cloth and paper like minimal stickers I was talking about. This was a freebie in an order. So you have stuff like this. And what's really cool is if you want to reuse something like this, if you put it on a dashboard, um, and a dashboard is basically, it's like a divider minus like the little thingy for you to write the name of the section on, right? Um, you can actually laminate it for reuse. So that's cool. And the task card is about the size of this little pocket that I put on here. And then you have your icon stickers. So these are your icon stickers, right? These are from Hey Planner Girl on Etsy. So you can also choose to be more along this route, or you can co you can combine them. You can do a little bit of everything, like I do. So that's that. Right now, what I'm experimenting with the most is now daily inserts. I was very resistant to daily inserts for a while, so I'm kind of playing around with that. But before, I was really more of a weekly uh, planner. So now let's talk about some planner supplies you may need as a beginner. Okay. So one thing I recommend is some kind of little pouch <laughs> to hold your items if you are just getting started and you don't have a lot of stuff yet. As you accumulate more stuff, you're probably going to want to get a planner cart or a photo box or something to store your things like I have. And I have videos on that. But anyway, this bag is from Stationery Muse. So I grabbed just a couple of like, if I had to start all over, <laughs> what are some of the essentials that I would grab? And one thing I just grabbed out of my little... Uh, box was this set of page flags and this is from staples so page flags are really good they're very comparable to like uh, their stickers you can buy like this and cloth and paper these are just really good to mark important pages in your planner things you want to go back to things you want to remember um, and this is an example of like what a task card looks like so this came like this but you could actually buy these plastic cards and glue this and make this yourself so definitely some kind of page flags see what's in here the next thing is sticky notes so I definitely recommend testing out sticky notes you don't have to buy a ton to get started but I grabbed a couple of my favorites but sticky notes are just great for planners just to throw extra stuff into your planner that may not make sense to really commit to in terms of writing it under a certain time or date so these two are from cloth and paper one says memo one is like an inbox style or you can use traditional blank sticky notes you can get from literally everywhere completely up to you and then I wanted to show you some that I got from Target. This is from the Noted by Post-it Note collection. And these are really nice because you can actually put these on the edge of a page and it use it as a divider. So it says ASAP, tomorrow, and later. And these come in a ton of different colors and they have some like this that say other things. So definitely something like that. The other thing I would recommend testing out is some kind of smaller notepad. Like a notepad that's smaller than the planner you use. They have notepads that are A5 size and half letter size and I have those and I love those. But I like things like this too because sometimes you truly just need to write a quick note to yourself, a quick list, a quick reminder. And what's cool is that you can paper, because it's smaller than your planner, you can paper clip this onto a sheet or you can even hole punch it and put it in the planner. So this is a memo pad that came in a cloth and paper subscription box. The other thing I grabbed was this small sticker kit. And there's like stuff in it from me throwing things in this bag. But a small sticker kit from Capital City, Capital Chic Designs. This is sold at Michael's, but you can also go on their site. I thought that this was a really nice sticker kit because it's small. It's, it gives you a chance to test out stickers without having to spend a ton of money um, if you don't want to get the sticker books. But what I really like about this, and let's just do a quick flip through. So you have some nice stickers that you can use to make lists, that you can use to write on. And they come in different color schemes. You have different headings you can use. 
and you have like more like little lists and things like that but what i was going to allude to is that they have like days of the week stickers in here so if you are someone who buys inserts that are undated like i do you can use those to like just jazz up your sticker book and then they have some smaller versions which i thought i grabbed but i didn't a smaller version that has a sticker with every month on it and then they have multiple days of the week and then they have like the third like 31 days like actual dates you can like plop into your planner so they it's the same brand so just remember that the other thing that i grabbed and these to relate these are from hobby lobby and these are paper clips and these are divider covers so if you want to make a divider you can go ahead and do that with these and these are adhesive tabs or you can cover up dividers so if you have a divider that says like january on it and you really like how the divider looks especially if it's something like happy planner where their dividers have designs on it you can use something like this to cover it up and again you can always get this stuff on sale and then these are just really nice for when you want to paper clip stuff into your planner or you can use these as deco so for example actually let's open up i think i have deco in here so going back to like something like this this is an example of like having deco in here these are from etsy by the way but this is an example of how you can use paper clips as decoration and then I have some tools in here. So I just threw some random paper clips in here just as a reminder to say paper clips are great and you can get really nice decorative paper clips. I don't even know where these are from. I've just had these forever. But then there's also like these gold ones that I bought on Amazon. And then there's these that are like Erin Congen brand. Notique also has nice paper clips. You can get paper clips to clip stuff onto your planner and paper clips themselves can be decoration. The other thing I highly recommend is double sided tape. I actually got this one on Amazon because I ran out recently and did not want to have to go back to Michael's. I was surprised at how much I would use this. I saw this in someone else's planner video when I was first getting started and I was like why would I ever need that and now I keep buying it. So this is really great for um, adhering things to the planner. Um, for example with this. So this is actually like a thank you for shopping card that came from a store and I liked this picture so I hole punched it. This adhesive pocket was a part of, um, it was a part of like a little set that I bought from one of these companies where I bought a bunch of these sets of stickers and they sent it in a little pocket. So I went ahead and like ugh, taped it on there. Same with this, like this one. This one wasn't adhesive. This was just like her branding in a pocket and I went ahead and used double sided tape to tape it on there. I've also used double sided tape to tape pages together. So I'll give you an example. In my happy planner that I'm now using for social media, if you've been here for a while, you're probably like, girl, what? I just use it for something else, social media. Things have changed. So in this planner, I was actually using the dividers from another planner and because of how happy planner does it it's like on the other side of the divider is half of the calendar so i needed the other half so basically what i did was i covered up this sheet the back of this sheet had a calendar on it i believe so i just basically glued this and this together with a double-sided adhesive and because of how the adhesive is made there's no residue there's no bulk there's no there's no you can't tell that this is glued okay so that's why that is just really good to have and you can get this for like two dollars at michael so highly recommend next thing you need is some kind of scissors i would get scissors bigger than this but i didn't feel like grabbing my big ones but actually these little mini scissors are really good for cutting like washi tape and are good for cutting stickers so if you are someone that's going to be a decorative planner these little stick these little scissors are great but if you're going to just be a regular planner i would just get a pair of good cutting scissors because if you go with the ring bound system you probably notice that i haven't actually opened the rings right i've just been ripping stuff off and that actually helps you to preserve your rings like you know opening them and closing a lot can do a lot of wear and tear so the recommendation is that you always cut little this is not a good example because you can't see it that you cut little slits right so that way you can prop it down almost like it's disc bound so that's the other reason why this is really effective and I'll fix that later and let's just grab everything else out of here so I don't have to keep <laughs> opening this so the other thing I just grabbed some more decorative paper clips but I've already talked about this so y'all already know these are from Etsy 
the other thing you need is a good pen okay so you need a good pen this is a uni pen i got this on amazon i really like these pens a lot i actually discovered them from cloth and paper the one that cloth and paper sells because there's different types of uni pens are great for writing on transparent sticky notes so if you are going to use those it's going to be a great pen but i just really like how these pens write so i did get a variety pack of sizes from them I also really like the tool brand of pens which are sold at Office Depot and this pen actually writes like the color it is. They sell colored pens and they sell regular black and blue pens. I have their black pens. I bought a set of those and they are absolutely amazing. Those are my like number one and like this one would be number two. But you need some good, pen good pens and I actually like multicolored pens. I like being able to distinguish things in my planner by color. So that's definitely an option for you. And then the other thing I would recommend is some kind of um, marker. And those are important for headings as well as writing on dividers. So here I have a double-sided Erin Condren marker. These come in a ton of different variety sets. Then I also have a Sharpie pen because sometimes you want that marker look without like the bulk of it so these actually come in a ton of different colors so this is a really great option for you and the last thing I'm going to mention is this tweezer so I remember some people use tweezers when I was watching planner videos in the beginning and I didn't understand it until I started to be a decorative planner and realized that placing stickers accurately with these acrylic nails was not cute it was not working at all but if you're just someone who maybe doesn't like to touch stickers a lot or maybe you I struggle with like accuracy because again I didn't think that was a big deal until I started to try to place stickers like those circles that I showed you those small ones and it was not going where I wanted it to go so something like this just makes it really really easy to pick the sticker up off of the paper and place it down where you want it to go I got this in a set of four like they come in different sizes and shapes and it was all of four bucks at Michael's you can also of course get it on Amazon things like that so that's some recommendations. If you are a planner beginner, what do you actually need? What, what should you consider? What should you try? And how do you make this as inexpensive as possible? If you have any questions, comment them down below. Happy to make a follow-up video based on any questions that you have. Um, good luck on your planner journey and make sure you stay connected. Bye guys.